Today we're turning this severely cracked Toyota dashboard into this. Well, this is my new to me 2005 Toyota 4Runner. It's got 236,000 miles on it and it's definitely in need of some TLC. But in today's video, we're focusing on this dashboard. This dashboard is severely cracked all over the place. You can see here on the driver's side how bad the cracks are all the way to the edge. It's so bad you just can't ignore it. Looking right over the steering wheel here, you can see another big crack. And looking closer at that same crack, you can see it runs down the whole dash and follows that line all the way down. It then runs right along the entire edge as far as you can see. There's another crack up here that ends up running all the way down this edge. And of course, the worst part is this massive spider web of cracks right above the glove box. Now to fix that, I could go the route of a dash mat, kind of like what I have here in my 1995 GMC Suburban. However, because this cracking dashboard was such an issue for many Toyota vehicles, of this generation, there's a company called Coverlay who decided to do something a little different. Instead of your typical carpet style dash mat, they came out with a vacuum formed rigid dash cover. Now, if we take a really close look at this, this isn't some cheap plastic cover. This actually looks like it is made of leather. Now the color on this one I bought here is black. And when you really take a second to look at this thing close up, you can see just what a good quality it is. They even do a precise cutout for the passenger side airbag, as well as an option for the center speaker if you have it. With this thing turned over, let's take a closer look. When you look up close from the back, you can see that there is a ridge here and that is to help hide your old dashboard. Overall, this looks like a really great build quality, so let's see how we can install it. As you would expect, it does come with some directions. And per the instructions, 3B here, it looks like we need to thoroughly clean the old dashboard with an ammonia type window cleaner such as Windex in order to remove any oils or preservatives that may have built up over the years. And I can confirm this dashboard was cleaned recently. I actually made a whole video about it, but because one of the main issues with these dashboards are not just that they crack, but that the actual material gets sticky, looking right back here you can still see there is some hair that needs to be cleaned off of this thing and with a brand new microfiber towel and my ammonia based cleaner I'll spray the cleaner right on the rag first and then I'll take the rag and start to wipe down the dash boy are they sticky it is phenomenal well, the entire dash all the way across is now as clean as it's going to get. And to be honest, because of how sticky this material is, it doesn't really feel like I cleaned it much, but I definitely went over the entire thing more than once. Okay, one small side note I'd like to make about this center speaker cover. You definitely do not need to remove this at all. And as a matter of fact, I don't recommend it one bit. You can see mine is all glued back together. I was simply curious what was underneath that, if I could see the condition of the speaker down there. So I decided I would remove this. And upon removing, it literally shattered in like four or five different pieces. And I decided to try to glue it all back together. And here's the back. And you can see there are two of these yellow clips that are completely broken off. I think I can glue those back on. But this piece is so brittle from the sun, you can see it cracked everywhere. And yeah, I know this glue on here looks absolutely horrible. I'm gonna be doing something about this, and if I can't make it look good, I'll probably just have to buy a whole new panel. So the point I'm trying to make is do not remove that cover. You don't need to. Okay, so on to this part. Now this, as you can imagine, is the airbag cover. When we were looking at that cover, I showed you the cutout for the airbag, and this piece right here is what actually goes on top of the dash first before you fit the cover so the whole thing looks uniform. All right, I'm just kind of holding that piece in here for now, but you can see that it fits in here precisely. It is made very well. You can see how they have actually molded it so you can tell exactly which part of this needs to be popping through this hole. All right, now that we have cleaned this thing, we can go ahead and attempt a test fit. Boy, this dash is sticky. Well, I'll tell you what though, To be honest, because this thing fits so darn good and the dash is sticky, it's a little bit difficult to kind of make sure everything is really where it needs to be because, I mean, as I'm moving this around, I can feel it stuck to the dash and I'm having to separate that connection there and move it 
back to where it actually needs to be. It's now temporarily installed for the test fit. Let's take a closer look. I mean, you can really see just how perfect this thing actually fits. I'm the type of person that's very interested in the small details. I really wanted to make sure these pieces were gonna be able to fit all the way down to where they need to be and not just be flapping around there. And when you really look close, it does. If you take your time and fit that edge, because there is an edge that slides down in there, this will fit all the way down where it needs to be. Now here you can see if we look up underneath, there is a little bit of a space there. So that's something we're definitely going to have to address. It does get siliconed in about an inch in from the edge. So we're gonna have to have something on there to hold it as tight as possible as that silicone cures. But looking at it from a normal distance, if that was siliconed in and glued nice and tight, that looks great. Sitting in the passenger seat here, you can see just how good this looks. I mean, no more cracks. It looks like a real factory dash. It just looks so good. But let's open this glove box and look up underneath and see what we're dealing with here. And you can still kind of see the cracks here on the very edge. I have to say my dash situation is pretty severe, so yours might be different. But this does, look at this. This is fit up there so perfect, it's not even glued and it is tight. And following that all the way across, you can see it is nice and tight everywhere. There's no play at all. Okay, onto this side here. So we're nice and tight up underneath. There is, I mean, the slightest, ever so slightest amount of play there but you can see for the most part, that does a really perfect job of covering up that old dash. Same thing along the entire top of the radio area here. Now looking up here where the center speaker is, there is kind of like a, a ridge downward, a rounded off ridge. I'm definitely gonna have to have some sort of sandbag or something holding that down as the silicone dries once we final install this. But for the most part, that fit is darn near perfect. I mean, I don't know how much better that gets. Okay, from the driver's side perspective, let's take a look up underneath here, right above the radio. And you can see that we still can see a little bit of a crack there. But again, my dash is very unique. I feel like it's a severe situation with this. That crack is the one that does run all the way up. But in reality, when it's a little bit darker inside your car, you don't have a bunch of video lights in here, you're not gonna see any of that stuff. Furthermore, again, there is no play in this whatsoever. This was literally made for this vehicle and it fits like a glove. It's not glued down at all and I literally have no play. So this is like as tight as it could possibly be. Now, the only other area of interest for me is this other little end cap. Because of the severity of the cracks in my dash, I was really hoping that this would get right down in there and cover that up. And for the most part, it does. You can see if I have this thing and I install it correctly and slide the edge there down in between this pillar and the dash, I think for the most part, I can get this to look fantastic. Okay, so how do we fit the airbag cover? It's gonna cover this actual factory dash here, but it's gonna slip underneath the cover lay section. So now that I have this fit in here really, really well, I'm gonna go ahead and trace out this opening here onto the factory dash. All right, I test fit the dash. It fits like a glove. I've even marked out the area for the airbag cover. So now we gotta remove this thing and then fit that airbag cover onto the dash and then retest fit the cover lay. I know, a lot of steps, but this is what goes into making this thing look factory. And boy, oh boy, this thing is stuck on here. I could almost leave it like this. This is how sticky the factory dash is. All right, yes, I did get the cover layout. It was really stuck on here, so that took a little bit. But I wanted to show you the outline that I made. You can see here it is in pencil. Now the thing is, if we take the airbag cover and put it on here, we can't simply just line up the pencil mark with the edge of the airbag cover because the only part of the cover here that's going to be shown that's going to be put through that hole in the cover lay is this raised up portion. So you can see the rest of this is actually going to be sitting underneath. So what I'm going to have to do here is actually line up this inner line here with the pencil mark. And as you can imagine, that's gonna be kind of difficult to do. Now on the back side of this, you can see they have this 3M tape. It's some very, very thin tape. That tape is really just to have this thing be set in place and not move. Hopefully you can tell, but part of it is also rounded. That's because obviously the dash is rounded. So this is like I said, this is a precision fit system. This airbag cover is definitely going to be tricky though. I think what I'm gonna to try to do is do the bottom two corners I'm gonna line up the edges here. Okay, 
might not be perfect. With that airbag cover in place, oh, gotta put that up there. Gotta get that down there. Ooh, tell me it's that good. Wow, look at how good that fits. So you can see it is perfectly lined up. I mean, as perfect as it's gonna get, the little raised edge is just coming out. Now I haven't gone ahead and perfectly pressed every single bit of this in. I just really wanted to see if this was lined up well. And it is. Reading through the directions, you can see this picture they provide. This is like the inside of the dash cover and there's a white line around the entire perimeter of it. And that white line represents the silicone. This is the tube of silicone they give you. So we'll go ahead and puncture this. And the only thing I have to do now is make sure that I'm only applying a small bead and about one inch from the edge of everywhere I'm gonna be applying. So I don't wanna get it too close because when you press this in, you don't want it smashing out into the viewable areas. This silicone has to stay hidden. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna be very cautious. I'm even gonna go a little bit farther than one inch. And I'm not gonna worry so much about a ton of silicone because you saw how tight this thing already fits without silicone at all. Okay, that's what my silicone looks like there. You can see it's not a very big bead at all, at least an inch away from the edge there. I'm gonna do that for the rest of the entire piece all the way around. One of the other reasons why I don't wanna to put too much silicone, when I'm trying to handle this thing, I don't want to accidentally put my hand in silicone and then get it everywhere. So here goes that install. I'm gonna to try to get it as far back as possible. I know I kinda of have to bend it in in the middle a little bit in order to get it to fit. Let's see here. Okay. Let's see these edges. I'm going the extra mile just making sure all this stuff is really, really pressed in there. What I have here is a bag of brown rice. I just need something that I can kind of wedge in here, provide some weight. All right, you can see the state of things so far. I have a wedge up here on the front of the dashboard. I have some wedges back there against the windshield and the dashboard. I have a sandbag right there in the middle. And I also have these bags of rice, which are kind of like sandbag, weight bags, you know. And same thing here on the driver's side corner. And then over here on the very end cap, I had to use some blue painter's tape. I pressed it down, stuck the tape, and pulled the tape down, and it's all stuck alongside here. So I think that's actually holding that down nicely. So far as I can tell, everything is held down really, really good. So I think I just have to wait. The directions say to wait eight hours before you remove all this stuff. Good morning. Oh, oh, hey guys. Did you guys stay here all night long? Well, let's go ahead and check this dash cover and see how it fared. Well, the directions state to wait for eight hours before you attempt to take anything off. And right away, one of the first things I wanna check is this masking tape. I had to replace the blue stuff with this white stuff, because I felt like it would be a little more sticky here. And I think that worked out, because as I'm looking at this, it's still stuck to the edge pretty good, and it's also still stuck here. I'm just, I was really nervous that this was gonna take off some of the finish. Let's pull this off. A little bit of tape residue there, but that should be pretty easy to get off. That was a tough spot, but overall, I feel like it looks pretty good. Like it is stuck down for sure, better than if I didn't have tape, but I just wish I could have got it to cover a little bit of that foam that's showing right there. Okay, coming over here to the passenger side, I think first let's check this out. This, you know what, because this little lip here that slides down in there is so unbelievably tight. I was able to push that all the way down in there. There is a little bit of that silicone in there. So that was able to glue itself down and hold really well. There is no play there. That is solid. All right, I'm going to take my two by four. Yep, that's still really tight. So that wedged in there really good. 
Well, right away, one thing I'm seeing is that my bag of rice didn't do a very good job of keeping this section down. You can see it's still a little bit, there's a gap there, you know, and you can honestly see, looking really close in there, you can see my silicone that didn't actually make contact because the gap is so large right there. Now, of course, I did go over these scenarios in my head beforehand, and I knew that, hey, if I wasn't able on this first round to get this to stick down, I can always come back in here with some more silicone, slid right underneath there, and another wedge or something to hold this down. So that's not a problem. I wish it was glued down this first time around, of course, but the other thing is once I get this cover back on here, you might not even see that. Okay, from the driver's side here, all we have left is this one other bag of rice, which doesn't seem like it was really doing much. I'm telling you guys, we didn't really need a whole heck of a lot of wedges and stuff like that. This thing fits like an absolute glove. So just by setting it right, by getting all these lips wedged down in there where they needed to be, I think that was itself enough to hold this in place and have it look good. And wow, look at that. It just looks so darn good. It really, really does look factory. I'm really, really happy with that. I really think this is exactly what I was hoping for. This, this is just awesome. All right, because I have some time before I can reinstall this center speaker cover, I thought I might as well squeeze a little more silicone up in there and then put some wedges on either side to try to get that to stay down. I was able to use a tool and pull up some of the plastic just slightly and you can see I have a couple of globs of silicone in there. And now on each side, I'm just gonna wedge this on there so you can see how much that's pressing down there. There we go, that's a lot better. So I should wipe up some of that silicone right there on the actual dash. And with those two wedges on either side there, you can see it's being held down really, really good. I wish I would have did this in the first place. And yet again, it is now the next day. Let's see if these wedges were able to do their job. It looks like they were. I'm hoping the silicone is doing its job. So let's remove these and see if that panel stays down. Okay, well that's a good sign. All right, I'm gonna remove this one. Okay, well that's really, really good. This area back here that didn't get glued down the first time looks like it is now glued down. So that's a really good thing. Now for the final piece on this dash, which is this center speaker cover, I spent some more time with some glue and baking soda trying to really reinforce all the cracks here. I think I'm gonna take some sandpaper and just sand down the edges that are gonna come into contact with the dash. As for the top actual viewable area, you can see right over here on this corner, this piece didn't really fit back together quite right. So there was a little bit of a gap, which is one of the reasons I wanted to use the baking soda trick. But overall, while not perfect, I was able to get all those globs of glue off the top here. So I think it's really not gonna be noticeable. I think this should be good enough. Well, with everything lined up, I'm hoping that I have enough clearance with this new dash cap. Please don't break, please don't break. Oh, I heard a crack heard a crack. It is in there. I can't speak to it ever coming out again in one piece, but overall, I think it looks fine. From a distance, you can see it definitely looks good, a lot better than that not being there. And boy, oh boy, look at the difference that this cover has made. Before we had a cracking, sticky, and faded looking dash. Now we have what looks like a brand new factory dash. This looks so good, guys. And here it is from the driver's side, and it just looks so good from all angles. Well, with the job now finally complete, I really would like to know what you guys think about this dash cover. Would you have gotten this rigid cover lay or would you have gotten the carpet type? Let me know down in the comments section below. I also want to let you know this video is not sponsored in any way. I paid for this with my own money. And with that, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up. It really does help this video and the channel. My name is Jimmy. This channel is One Road and I will see you in the next one.